Hello, and welcome to our webinar on tips for simpler and safer testing in quality control environments. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Today, I'm joined by Dan Caesar and Meredith Bernstein, who will be co-presenting today's topic. Uh, before we get started, I just want to take a quick moment to introduce these wonderful presenters. We'll start with Meredith. She is an applications engineer that has worked with our low force static testing systems for the past couple of years. So that includes our 3400 and 6800 series table models. And then we've got Dan, who is the product manager for all of Instron's static testing software, which includes Blue Hill Universal and Blue Hill Elements, which you will learn about today. Before product management, Dan worked in our calibration lab and also spent some time as an applications engineer. We expect the presentation should take around 40 minutes and then we'll have some time for questions. I encourage you to submit any questions you might have here as we go along. Some we might address directly via chat and others we'll address at the end. One last note, in the top right hand corner of your screen, you should see the option to change your view. To really optimize the view of the slides and our presenters, we recommend you set your view to side-by-side -side speaker. So with that said, I'll turn things over to Dan to get us started. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are going to start with a quick agenda. Um, so we're going to start things off with a number of slides. We're going to go through uh, some pressures of QC testing that I'd imagine a lot of you will be familiar with. Some of these pressures are ones that have been established in industry for for decades now. Some of them um, are a little bit more recently involved into the industry and have become a little bit more important in, in recent years. And then we're gonna move into how Instron can help you succeed. And that's gonna be done today by highlighting our, our 3400 system, as well as our, our basic software platform, Blue Hill Elements. Um, once we go through those two, two sections, we're gonna switch gears and Meredith is gonna take over and do a live demonstration of a lot of the, the features and, and functions that I will have spoken to in the second section. Uh, and then we're gonna switch back into some slides after the demo to focus on um, some points of differentiation uh, between our, our basic offering, which we're gonna be talking quite a bit about today. And then if maybe you, you need uh, our more advanced um, options offered by Blue Hill Universal and our, our 6800 series systems. So once once we've reviewed all of those topics, we'll have, like, like uh, Nick had mentioned, um, a question and answer session to address any questions you have. So uh, feel free to, to continue to, to, to enter questions into the chat so we can get to them at the end of, end of the hour. Okay, so pressures of the trade. Um, just as a, a quick start, just as a, as a definition, Oxford Languages defines quality control as a system of maintaining standards in manufactured products by testing a sample of the output against the specification. So very wordy. Maybe we try to make this a little bit easier to digest. Maybe we replace a few words uh, to get this, the catchy six S, S's of quality control which I'm fairly certain is not taught, but let's give it a go anyways. So quality control is a system of sustaining standards by sampling stuff against specifications. So I'm not really sure if I like that much better um, than uh, Oxford Language's definition, but regardless, uh, I think you all should have a pretty good understanding of what quality control departments do. Um, and as with most jobs, comes the pressure to continuously improve. Um, specific to QC, some pressures are established, meaning they've, they've been around for a while and, and the most successful businesses have implemented at least one, but likely multiple process improvements or equipment investments to address these listed established pressures. So lowering the chance of a product recall at the top of the, is at the top of the list for a reason. Um, and it's arguable that all of the items below relate back to reducing the risk of that poor quality product escapes to an end consumer. Because at the end of the day, that's why quality control testing exists. Uh, nearly everyone benefits if product quality is high, your business benefits financially, your customer and end consumers benefit from the safety and the longevity of the product. 
regulatory bodies remain happy, everyone really benefits. Um, I mean, I guess you could say that your direct competitors aren't very happy, um, but that's okay. Um, so while it's natural to, to highlight the upside, it's really the, the downsides that the downside that can serve even greater motivation to invest in quality control process improvements. So product recall occurrences can be devastating um, for, of course, the, the impacted end consumers, but also for the profitability of your business. So name an industry, whether it's automotive, aerospace, um, the pharmaceutical industry, medical devices, the, the, food, uh, the food space, um, and you're gonna find a graveyard of products or even companies that cease to exist due to product recalls. So it's easy to focus on, okay, we can perform better financially, but um, part of that is the, the reverse side where if you don't invest um, that there, there is a higher risk that um, you could have serious uh, repercussions. Um, so going through the other items on the list, you're pressured to reduce uh, inspection time to ship more product with shorter lead times. Uh, you're, you have pressure to increase the accuracy or reliability of testing, to reduce the ramp up time for training new users, um, and to maintain and enforce your department's standard procedures. So on top of these, additional pressures have evolved into the industry that have become very prominent in recent years. So work environment safety is now the highest priority of many businesses, especially those businesses whose employees are at higher risk of serious injury from operating machinery. And unfortunately, most of these businesses are aware uh, of the high expense and are very aware of, of, of keeping safety at a high priority. Um, because they know, they know firsthand the, all the uh, direct and indirect costs associated to workplace injuries. Another trend that is, is sweeping through uh, various industries is the need to digitize testing records. Um, the manual process of, of maintaining a paper trail of traceability for testing procedures and test data is very time consuming and is also very prone to human error. And for this reason, quality control labs have, have begun to make the switch um, some industries sooner than others, uh, but they, they are all making the switch to digital record keeping where possible. So these trends, whether established or evolving, come from a host of sources. Some are internal and others are external. So while there are many more kind of nuanced items I'm not gonna get to uh, in this diagram, I've tried to make some generalizations to capture this in a simple manner. But internally, you might have pressures to meet the objectives or metrics that the quality director or upper management is expecting. Um, but there's no relief externally. Uh, it might even be worse as you're, <laughs> you have the market expecting a certain quality. You have government regulatory bodies expecting or even perhaps auditing your QC processes. And then there's your competition who can drive you out of the market with their superior differentiated quality. So there's a lot of uh, sources of pressure. Um, and then the, the final graphic here is, to, is meant to represent that everything that we've discussed so far on this slide is relevant to both small and large organizations. So the sheer, the sheer numbers involved uh, may be vastly different, but quality controls impact in a manufacturing organization is shared. So now let's throw some of the broad quality control items of concern through this funnel or this screen or whatever we want to call it. Um, and out comes the material testing metrics that should be a priority for uh, QC testing labs to improve. So the first is safety of your equipment and of your operators. So this could be represented in, in maybe dollars per year if you were to add up the cost of replacing damaged equipment or, or a cost associated to any sort of workplace injury. Then we have the throughput uh, or the number of tests that your lab can, can run in a day. So that could be specimens per day, specimens per hour, what have you. Uh, and then next is how much time and, and cost is associated to training new and existing users. And finally, the, the reliability of the inspection being performed. 
which can have a metric maybe as the the number of escapes per year or the and then also uh, the cost associated to each escape. So uh, throughout the rest of the webinar, Meredith and I are going to be discussing relevant uh, features from the Instron uh, product portfolio. Um, and we're going to be talking about different testing tips. But let's try to keep these metrics and these these words in mind. Um, so throughout the rest of the slides, I've, I've tried to highlight some statements with red font to just try to remind us of, of some of these items. So we're going to start by introducing four new features offered on 3400 systems. And then we will focus on a few software features available in Blue Hill Elements. And it's worth mentioning that all features that we're going to be discussing today are, are offered also on our, pre, our premium product line, the 6800 series and Blue Hill Universal. Um, and as a reminder, back to the agenda that after the demo that Meredith provides, I'm going to be um, providing a comparison between the base and premium solutions to give you all a, a better idea of the limitations you might have uh, with the 3400 system with Blue Hill Elements that we're going to be talking about now. So Operator Protect, our first feature, is, is really the new underlying system architecture, which helps mitigate the risk that the equipment poses itself. So on our systems, operator are most exposed to these risks when they're setting up for their tests. So when you look at the most common incidences on these machines, they typically fall into two categories. One is pneumatic grip pinches, and the other is uh, unexpected movement during a jog or return action. So by limiting the capability of the system when they're in the, this state, you can help keep your operators and your equipment much safer. And as always, your efficiency is always a, a consideration. So our, our workflow means that there are no surprises and no compromises with, with your testing when it comes to this operator protect framework. So 3,400 and 6,800 systems both bring all buttons to initiate movement to the machine rather than the software and the machine. Um, and there's an intelligent lighting that guides operators on which buttons to press. To increase awareness of the frame status, we have introduced clear system modes, which I'll review on the next slide. Um, so one little plug is during the setup mode, the frame has restricted restricted motion, so a slower jog speed, a, a lower uh, pneumatic pressure when closing to reduce the risk and severity of accidents. And the virtual interlock simulates the closing of an interlock shield before starting a test to unleash the full power of the system. So when pressed, the full jog speed is released uh, and high grip pressure becomes available. So here are the four system modes. Um, each has its own border color to visually remind the user this, what state the system is in. So starting on the far left, um, in the disabled state, no motion is allowed. Uh, next, the, the setup mode restricts motion. Um, and to allow grip setup and specimen insertion to occur in that safer state, Caution is a two second temporary state entered when the virtual interlock is pressed. And then if a test is started in that two second time frame, the frame will enter a, a testing mode um, and the system can operate, operate at full speed, full capacity. With the new platform, we have built in safety coaching, guiding operators through tests uh, to help keep them safe. And one of the things that we set out to do with Operator Protect was to make sure that the operators were, were more aware of what their system is actually doing. And that's kind of one thing that we can achieve through our safety coaching uh, features seen throughout the software. So many labs have high turnover 
um, or they might have the opposite, they might have very infrequent operators. So we wanted to make sure that our software provided clear direction to operators as to what they need to do and what their machine is doing. Um, so this, these types of reminders range from, um, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Operator, you're about to start a test, make sure to set the mechanical limits of the frame, um, something like that, or also just simply reminding them if a test is actively uh, live or not. <clears throat> so here are a couple different examples of clear uh, warning indicators that instruct the user of a potentially unsafe system states. So the first one here warns you that the initial lower grip pressure is set above the recommended value. And the second warns you that collision mitigation is not active. So you may have no idea what the initial grip pressure or collision mitigation are at this point in time, but don't worry in the next couple of slides that that should become clear. So with the new smart close air kit, grips will initially close at a low pressure when inserting a specimen, minimizing the hazard of, of finger bridges. So once they are closed and you start your test, you start your test, the system will then increase the grip pressure to a software defined pressure appropriate for your material. Here is a, a quick video uh, demonstrating the smart close air kit. So you can see operators inserting the sample, the clip grips close, not too much pressure, but as he starts, unlocks the system and starts the test, we can see that the pressure ramps up uh, in preparation to, to actually test. So beyond the, 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 the kind of obvious safety benefits, Saving the testing pressure to a test method removes any time or variability added to your testing process required uh, by, by manually adjusting pneumatic grip pressure, which is the, the prior approach uh, if you have uh, a pneumatic grip for your testing. And the, the last 3400 feature we're gonna be reviewing today is collision mitigation, which is designed to help you protect your investment and just feel a little bit more confident when you're using an instrument frame. Collision mitigation helps to reduce damage to equipment and specimens by stopping the crosshead if force is detected during a jog or event, sorry, or during a jog or return event. Um, so after, after the crosshead stops, the crosshead will actually move up or down slightly to the position where the event was first detected to relieve any uh, undesired force. So when we're trying to, when you think about protecting your fixtures, protecting your load cells, that collision mitigation should come to mind. And here's another uh, quick video, this time demonstrating collision mitigation. So in this case, an operator is loading a spring, maybe he's uh, kind of not paying attention as he's jogging the system um, and there it is, the obstruction was detected, the crosshead was stopped, um, and that, that particular component is, is uh, protected. All right, so now let's switch gears a little bit to, to Blue Hill Elements. So Intron's testing software developed to meet the basic testing needs of a lab, which Elements is, is very well suited for QC environments where simple tension or compression testing at a fixed rate is all that is required. Once more complex applications are required for testing, then that's when you're gonna to need to look at uh, Instron's premium offerings. And I'll get into a lot of the, uh, more of the differences later, but one that is very apparent uh, when using Blue Hill Elements versus if you have uh, an operator using Blue Hill Universal, is that it's not compatible with our operator dashboard that mounts to the mounts directly to the column of the system. So instead, a traditional PC and monitor in landscape is used for Blue Hill Elements. 
And to optimize Blue Hill elements for a QC test, we're going to be focusing on a few features. Some are bigger than others. Um, but this first screenshot uh, allows us to talk to the to the first two. So that's that's control charts and our pass fail module. So Blue Hill Elements allows for two different uh, graph types. Universal allows for four, but control charts are one of the two graph types that are available in, uh, in Blue Hill Elements. And when the primary purpose of your test is to evaluate a result against specifications, control charts are a great way to visualize the performance of that product. Each point represents a specimen's result uh, and where it landed with respect to any, any tolerances that you might have, the mean value, you can have uh, standard deviations plotted as well, um, but it is a useful visual tool. In a similar vein, the pass fail module can also be added to the workspace to very clearly display whether um, the selected specimen or that most recently tested specimen um, has passed or failed more than one criteria. So to add a little bit more detail here, um, specific to, to pass fail, our warning bounds were recently added to the pass fail in addition to the existing failure bounds. Um, so they have their own respective symbols to allow easer, users to easily distinguish when a result is nearing an out of tolerance condition or is actually out of tolerance. Um, so this was something that we heard uh, was uh, a number of our customers wanted to see and that we were able to deliver it in, in uh, a recent version of, of Blue Hill. Some other small tips here is that you can relabel pass fail to whatever you want. You could do yes, no, you could do good, bad, whatever really makes sense for your lab, you can change that text. Um, also the specimen uh, evaluation can be done against more than a single result. So maybe you care about tensile strength and you care about elongation at break. So you can set up uh, your warning and failure bounds for both of those results. And if either of them fail for a particular specimen, then it'll tell you that the specimen failed and what, what was responsible. And then finally here, don't, don't forget about moving and, and resizing the workspace items around for your liking. Um, we found that a lot of our customers like to position the pass fail uh, as kind of a prominently located item in their work in their workspace, something that they could even see across the lab just to see how the, the test uh, performed that they might have started a couple minutes prior. So our next feature, our next uh, uh, optimization for, for QC labs for Blue Hill Elements is workflow. And it's a standard feature that guides users through the entire testing process with a step-by-step -step instructions, ensuring that all of the tests remain repeatable, simple, and error-free, no matter what operator steps in front of that system. So you can see displayed, there's a number of different uh, sections of workflow depending on what part of the testing process you're in. So whether you've just started the sample and you need to enter some batch ID information, maybe when the batch was produced, um, but then it goes into, okay, before every specimen, I need to enter that specimen ID, maybe some a width or a, a thickness value. Um, you might want to be instructing your operator to do one thing or the other in a particular section. So just reminders can be uh, and instructions can be can put can be put into these sections. So if we if we open up before test um, to try to see what that might actually look like as an operator is walking through the workflow. Um, we can see that the operator is provided some text instructions on the top left. Then underneath that, there's a, a photo for best practices as they're in, inserting specimens. And then on the right, there's a couple fields to enter before each test is started. So without workflow enabled, um, it can be common for operators to forget to do some of those best practices um, or forget to enter some of the required fields each and every time they're running a test. The last recommendation uh, for optimizing Blue Hill Elements today is, is one that I feel is underutilized by, by many labs using Blue Hill. 
Blue Hill Security allows you to configure permissions, granting access to trained personnel and limiting access where needed. It's really a great way to just prevent unwanted behavior in the software and on the frame. Um, so if some users are not trained to run tests, prevent them to do so. If other users are not trained to create and modify methods, again, this can simply be prevented by using Blue Hill Security. So typically, uh, tests that are being run in QC labs, are, they're not changing day to day, they're not changing week to week. Um, and operators running the frames are generally not the ones who are, are creating um, and validating these test methods. So for, for many QC labs, there's really no reason to allow operators to have the ability to go in and edit some of the method parameters. So all it takes is one unintended change to, to compromise your inspection process. So this is why we always recommend you to enable security. Okay, so that was uh, a lot of slides, a lot of content. Um, so I'd imagine that you all will be excited to uh, change gears, stop having to listen to me and switch to the live, live demonstration where, uh, with Meredith, where she'll be reinforcing some of the, uh, or many of the features that we have discussed so far today. Awesome, thanks, Dan. So, I'll wait for uh, Dan's slides to disappear here so you guys get a nice good view of the system sitting next to me. There we go. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm here in our uh, demonstration studio. And like Dan mentioned, I'm going to do a quick system demo and go through some of the features in Blue Hill Elements that we just covered in the slides. So to start off, I'm standing right next to a uh, 34 SC5, which is our five kilonewton single column test system. Uh, I have on here a two kilonewton load cell and we'll be using one kilonewton capacity pneumatic side action grips with uh, 25 by 25 millimeter serrated jaw faces. Um, for anyone who's unfamiliar with our systems, uh, all of our grips and fixtures utilize a really simple uh, pin and clevis connection, which makes it really easy to swap between fixtures um, if you know different configurations are needed for different tests. So I just slide that in and insert my pin and I'll tighten up this check nut here to make sure that everything is secure. I just attach my pneumatic hoses and we're good to go. Um, the other thing I wanna highlight on the system that Dan showed you on his slides, but uh, you can probably see a little bit better now uh, over video is the control panel on the 3400. So like we talked about, all system motion is controlled directly on the machine itself. So this is where I can jog my crosshead up and down. I can start my test. I can stop my test. Um, I can return the crosshead to my starting position. And this is also where our emergency stop button is located. So for any reason during testing, um, I need to you know, quickly stop my test. I simply press the emergency stop. System stops moving. It will cut pneumatic pressure to the grips. And I just simply have to rotate this button back and then I can enable the frame again. Um, and we'll again cover these uh, buttons a little bit more when we actually begin our test, but I just want to quickly show you that right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, share the software screen from the computer that's actually running the system. So you'll really get a nice up close look at what the software looks like as I'm interacting with the machine. So let me go ahead and do that. Blue Hill Elements, share. All right. So in case anything's changed with the way uh, you've been viewing the setup throughout the webinar, just as a reminder, we really recommend that you click that view button and go to side-by-side -side speaker. So ideally you should be seeing the software screen on the left side and then me with the system on the right side. There's also a slider in the middle that you can adjust uh, the size of the two uh, images that you're seeing. So if you wanna see something closer on the system, make me bigger. If you wanna see the software, make that side bigger. Um, but you know, this is as close as we can get to you being right in front of a system with me uh, and running a test in person. So um, please utilize that to make sure you're, you're really getting the full picture here. 
So most of this demo is gonna kind of highlight um, the functionality of Blue Hill Elements like Dan discussed. And just again, a reminder, everything we're showing you is also possible within Blue Hill Universal. Um, however, there's also some additional features in Blue Hill Universal that we can't do with Elements and Dan will cover that um, after this, this demo section wraps up. So Blue Hill Elements works is our uh, basic software platform that is compatible only with our 3400 systems. Um, the way that I have it set up right now is with some basic security uh, permissions set up. So, you know, there were images in the presentation where you could see that there was a test option or a, a test tab, a method tab, and an admin tab. And here you only see test and admin. So this has been set up so that I'm logged in. You can see in the bottom left corner where it says operator. So I am set up with limited permissions where I can, the only thing that I can do right now on this system is pick test and start running a test. I am not set up with the permissions to edit a method um, or to create a new method. So this is really a, you know, what you're seeing is exactly what an operator would see when they walk up to a system to begin their testing. So I'm gonna open up test and open up this sample that I'd been working on earlier. Um, so it's gonna remind me to set my travel limits. This ties into our safety coaching that we talked about where the system is really gonna to continue to remind and prompt the operator throughout the testing process and make sure that they are uh, taking all the correct safety precautions and also kind of just in general, reminding the operator what the system will be doing at any given time. So I'm gonna press okay. And now we're into our test tab. So, you know, within uh, Blue Hill Elements or Blue Hill Universal, uh, if you have full permissions, typically you'll see test, method, report, and there'll be things that you can go in and edit within the software. The way that this is set up right now, all I can see is the test tab and I am immediately dropped into my workflow where I'm being prompted exactly what I need to do. Um, and it really walks me through the step-by-step -step process here. This is the slide where Dan showed you, you know, there was a photo of what's a, what it, you know, how, how it looks, how it should look when you insert a specimen, what's good, what's bad. Um, and this can all be edited to, you know, put in whatever instructions you need or, or if there's any other operator inputs that you want to include. Right here, we just have width and thickness. Um, so I've already measured a couple of these specimens. So I'm going to edit this and say this was 6.5 and my width was 12.55. Okay. So reading through my instructions, we make sure the specimen's installed, make sure my hands are clear, and then press start. So first thing, I'm gonna insert my specimen and using our foot switch, I'm gonna close the upper grip and then the lower grip. And I don't know how clearly you can tell, but so you'll see this blue border around the software, right? I am in the setup mode at the moment. So the pressure that is going to these grips is 15 PSI. Now my testing pressure was set within the method where I can't edit it right now because I'm only logged in as an operator but the testing pressure was set to, I think it's 60 or 80 PSI within the method. It'll be exactly the same every time this method is used. Um, and this ensures, you know, it's repeatable between operators, right? It's not something that you have to set every time on a regulator. If you're switching between test methods, the test method knows what the pressure needs to be for that uh, test that you're running. And once I move my test into the, um, once I start my test and it goes into the testing in progress state, at that moment, it will initialize to the full testing pressure. But by you know limiting it to 15 PSI during setup, it means that the grips are operating in this limited safer state while my hands are in the test space. And as soon as you know I'm sort of clear and I go to start my test, then it'll increase um, to that higher clamping pressure. Um, so we talked about this a little bit earlier too, but you know, this blue uh, setup state, the blue border around your software, this is our default. This gives us a limited jog speed and this lower clamping pressure. And again, all of this really ties into keeping our operators safer. 
So the system will default to a state that is safer for your operators to interact with. Uh, when I go to press the virtual interlock button and I press unlock, I am given two seconds to then initiate um, higher speed motion of the system. And if I don't initiate higher speed in that time, I, it'll default back to the setup state. And adding this sort of second button to initiate a start of my test means it has to be deliberate, right? I can't bump into the system and accidentally start it and initiate on expected movement, which is then dangerous to both your operators and potentially damaging to your equipment. So let me make sure I have my safety glasses on um, and we will start the test. So I'll press unlock and then start. And you can see that when I pressed unlock and start, my clamping pressure increased, right? Um, it, you know, it's now holding this at 80 PSI. As my test is running, um, you know, you can see in graph one up here that the data is plotting live. So I can see pretty quickly that, you know, this is following a very similar path to the test specimens I've tested previously that are of the same material. And I can visually, okay, it's matching up that, that looks like it's pretty good. The pass fail icon is telling me it's not evaluated, right? Because it doesn't have results for uh, this specimen yet. Um, but as soon as my test finishes, that will give me a pass or fail indicator based on the criteria that we've set it up with. Um, at the bottom of the screen here is the control chart that Dan mentioned. So this gives an overview of invested. So for them, you know, fell within my failure bounds. And specimen five was a little bit low. And actually this one was a little bit low. So, you know, I've failed. And those are, you know, uh, tests that I might want to go look at, back at a little more closely or, you know, I wonder why I failed because we'd hope that none of them would fail. So it's a good way to monitor sort of your whole batch of testing. And then pass fail gives you a really clear indicator that somebody across the room could see uh, as to the outcome of this specific test. One other thing I did want to point out that we have this set up with is uh, auto return. So these are pre pretty high elongation specimens. Um, my crosshead was way up high when my test ended. And instead of having to stand here and jog it all the way back down, I set this up so that when the test ends, the crosshead will automatically return to its starting position. Now, I wouldn't do that if I'm testing a rigid plastic or something that um, you know would potentially cause damage if it ran into each other. But for something that's uh, pretty flexible like this elastomer, there's no problem in having it come back down, bump into itself. Um, it really just improves your testing efficiency and saves a lot of time between uh, specimens that you're testing. So let me remove my broken specimens. And we're gonna run through a scenario that you, maybe you've seen in your lab and we also showed in, uh, in a quick video clip there. But let's pretend I'm paying attention to the software and I'm jogging my crosshead um, and I'm not paying attention to it. I'm not watching. I'm not seeing what it's doing. I'm looking at my control chart. Um, I'm looking at my specimen results. And we keep jogging down, jogging down, jogging down, jogging down. And my grips have collided. Now, under normal conditions, this could be really, really damaging to a load cell, right? And you know, the potential for damaging your load cell means that, that you might need to send it back to us to repair. There's time that your uh, line is down because you can't perform this testing. In this case though, collision mitigation was activated, an obstruction was detected. I get this pop-up that's part of our safety coaching, tells me exactly what's happening with the system. And it instructs me how to um, you know, get out of this situation. So jogging has been stopped, clear the test area. In this case, the grips have just run into themselves. So I can now jog up and I can press unlock and return. And my crosshead's just gonna go right back to my starting position. So instead of potential costly downtime and paying for repairs, anything like that, um, I can now just continue running my tests without disruption. Um, I'll clear the, this message. And I don't know if anybody noticed this earlier when it prompted me to set my safety limit. Um, I did not set them properly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this up. So, you know, collision mitigation is a great uh, backup that we have to protect your equipment. Uh, but safety limits are also 
you know, something that should always be used uh, in order to avoid exactly what I just showed happening. Um, and, you know, really everything that we've covered here, the goal is uh, testing efficiency and, uh, you know, simplicity, right? Keeping, you know, reminding operators what's happening with the system, giving instructions of how to go about running the test step by step. Uh, all of this just, you know, ensures that they will be kept safer. Your tests will be run more repeatedly. And it is easier to train people because, you know, the, the system does a lot of continual instruction on how to perform the testing and what the system will be doing at any given time. Um, and all of these things, you know, efficiency and simplicity are really optimal for the, you know, QC testing environment. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Dan, who's going to go through uh, some of the features that you would see on a 6800 or in Blue Hill Universal, and then we'll move on to our Q&A session. Thanks. All right, thanks, Merida. All right, so very good, very good demo. Um, always like to see the Instrance Studio in use, so very good stuff. Um, so the next, as alluded to earlier in the uh, presentation, we're gonna be finishing up with this slide uh, today before we get into Q and A. So everything you saw today is is available on the 3400 system uh, in Blue Hill Elements that you just saw in person, um, which is Instron's base model uh, and software package for, for static axial testing. So I will mention um, that the pass fail uh, module that we saw is, is not standard to elements um, and it must be purchased as an add-on, but everything else from a feature standpoint is part of the standard offering of, of Blue Hill Elements. So, so upgrading to Blue Hill Universal provides value um, beyond elements to, to, to many users, but it's important to consider the additional functionality and to be able to evaluate it uh, in the context of your lab to make sure that your lab would be able to realize any of those benefits. So uh, I have listed many of the features and functions that one would gain if choosing Blue Hill Universal, uh, and then also if choosing a 6800 frame on, on the far right. Um, but the bold items are the ones I'd like to discuss today because they're the ones that are the most relevant to QC testing. So the first uh, on the list is traceability, which is Blue Hill's compliance solution. Um, to allow labs to know exactly who is doing what in the software, when they did it, why they did it, and then to have all of that data tracked automatically in an in integrated audit trail. So it's really the next step uh, above security, and it, and it heavily utilizes our existing standard security models, um, but it's really the next step. So one easy, and one easy way to demonstrate this is, is when you change a method when a, when a user changes a method and all the only thing that's active is security and traceability is not in place, that it really only makes sure that the correct users with the permission to do so are the ones that are changing those methods. So traceability takes this a step or two further by, by not only doing that, but by also tracking each modification of that method so what items are, what affected items are being changed? What was the previous value? What was the new value? When, what is the timestamp? When did this change occur? And then any electronic signatures approving that change um, are all tracked in the traceability module. So knowing the revision history of a test method can be hugely valuable uh, for labs that used controlled methods. So many times when uh, if traceability is not in place and you have a couple different versions of the same method, it's very hard to distinguish what's actually different between the two. So revision history is a part of our traceability module and it comes in very handy for labs um, that find themselves in that position uh, quite a bit. So the next item on the list is Active Directory. So it, this is another security type that is only available in Blue Hill Universal. 
uh, Active Directory allows users to log in to Blue Hill with their Windows network credentials rather than requiring all of the users and passwords to be created and stored in Blue Hill. So if you're using Blue Hill Elements, you're, you're, um, you have the, the only option for security is to have that uh, model called Blue Hill Security, which is uh, integrated into Blue Hill software in, su in such a way that where you're, you're creating users and their passwords in Blue Hill, whereas Active Directory allows you to simply assume the network credentials um, of your organization. And, and then with the operator dashboard, um, Universal, Blue Hill Universal was designed for touch and as such, it's sold with a touch computer. So it's oriented in portrait, it's mounted directly to the frame. The footprint of the system is reduced. The user's proximity to the actual test space is, is more ideal than if you have a computer off to the side. Um, so these are all considerations for uh, potential reasons to, to think about purchasing Blue Hill Universal. So there's there's items listed below. Uh, so if you have questions, just feel to, to feel free to, to just ask a question about any of the, the items that I'm not going to be going into detail today. Moving to the next column. So we're switching kind of from just the, the software improvement to software and hardware, but these items are specifically focusing on what's um, what features are added from the hardware point of view. So auto positioning. Auto positioning is a 6 to 800 only feature that makes use of an absolute encoder to configure fixtures for consistent setup. So operators can save fixtures for use across any method and have Blue Hill do the work to figure out where the crosshead needs to be when you're actually starting a test. So visual reminders will show operators what their fixtures should look like, and it should warn them where the crosshead is going before this automatic adjustment occurs. But really this speaks to um, improving throughput. So if, you, if you're if you used to trying to get the crosshead exactly in the right position, um, that can take some time if you're doing it manually, or if you have one operator doing it one way and another operator doing it a different way, again, you have variability there with the, the actual test setup. Um, and this will eliminate that entirely. So the next on the list is Specimen Protect. Again, 68, uh, 6800 series only feature that prevents unwanted force on the specimen when inserting that specimen before the test begins. So if you have a really sensitive uh, type of material or, or maybe the opposite, a super rigid uh, specimen, that just the act of closing the grips can induce quite a bit of load um, on a very rigid sample, or if you have a very sensitive sample, you don't want any load at all before the test starts. So in those cases, if you, to prevent that damage, um, if specimen protect is enabled, it will move the, the system's crosshead very slightly up or down to, to remove any for unwanted force that it sees. And the final 6800 only feature I'm going to discuss is the torsion add-on. Um, and again, please ask anything underneath if you're curious. Um, but if you are testing a product that requires rotation or any sort of torsional loading, I would certainly recommend checking out um, our content online for the torsion add-on 3.0. It's a product that just recently came out, iterated off of the last um, five years or so of that product. Um, and it really takes your, your axial only system and it converts it into a biaxial system. Um, so, but again, this should only be a consideration if your lab needs to apply torque or rotation. Um, so maybe common to, to tubing or, or, or packaging uh, industries, medical devices with screws and threads. So that type of thing um, where, where you need rotation and torque um, is, is of course kind of that, that application. And with that, um, I think we're going to move into our question and answer session. So let me try to pull up um, some of the questions that have been coming in. I think we tried to answer a couple in real time and if we don't 
get to your specific question um, just in this in this session, we'll make sure to reach out to you. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to grab my question window. But okay, so the first one of the first questions that came in is does a computer or what computer comes with Blue Hill Elements? Um, so a week, uh, Instron offers a Dell PC that can be purchased with Blue Hill Elements, but if you're not intending, so that's if you're not intending on supplying your own PC. I mean, we find that it's, it's quite common uh, for customers who are purchasing Blue Hill Elements um, and 3400 systems that they are also the same customers that tend to supply their own PCs. So there's a couple options, but we do have a, a Dell um, desktop PC uh, as an option. Um, someone saw the word test profiler uh, and they were just curious of what a brief description of what that was again. Um, so test profiler is an add-on module to Blue Hill Universal. Um, and it allows users to, to create multi-step testing sequences. So if you think about cyclic testing, low frequency cyclic testing. So, uh, and by low frequency, I mean about one Hertz or so as the highest. So one cycle per second. So low frequency uh, cyclic steps you have hold steps if you need to hold force or hold stress or hold position. Um, and then also a couple of different other block types like relative ramps, absolute ramps. So you can put all of these different types of blocks together in any order that you want. You can specify parameters for each, for each of those uh, steps. Um, so it really just gives users a lot more flexibility to control the frame during a test. Because traditionally, if you don't have test profiler, what are you doing? You're, you're going to test control. You're saying, um, I'm running at 25 millimeters a minute. And that's essentially the extent of the test control for, uh, for that particular test. You might have, depending on the type of uh, method, you might have uh, multiple ramps. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to do all sorts of things, sequentially, um, then test profiler is going to be required. Um, we got a question, how, how new are some of the products that you've talked about today? Um, so that's one thing that um, as, a, as a product manager is sometimes hard to, to think about. We're always worked up in the worlds of like, what's the now, what's the newest, latest and greatest. And a lot of our install bases on earlier systems and earlier platforms. So kind of to add a little bit of context here, the, the 3400 series frames and Blue Hill Elements, they were both released globally um, in early 2020. So they haven't been around too long. Um, and th that's the same time frame as, as I guess I mentioned the 6800 series system that was released at the same time as the 3400, again, early 2020. Um, Blue Hill Universal uh, predates those by a few years. So 2017 was when we first launched Blue Hill Universal. It's been continued to be developed um, as it is our production software. Um, and then I guess some of the smaller features, we, we talked about control charts, we talked about workflow, Blue Hill Security, they've all been around for quite some time as they were introduced in earlier Bla uh, Blue Hill platforms. So it's, it's worth for those features. If you don't have elements or a 3400 frame, you could go into to, um, your Blue Hill software today and you'll likely be able to find those, those features. Um, another question is, do you recommend using a preload routine? Um, our lab is unsure of the speed and the values to use for our preload. Uh, okay. so. Going back to my apps engineering days, yes, I mean, this is a, uh, a something that we certainly recommend um, for the vast majority of testings because preloads, just to give a little bit of context, they, they remove kind of any sort of unwanted slack uh, in the specimen prior to the start of the test. So this can be very important for getting uh, 
the most accurate elongation data. And really the key for choosing the preload values, you're, you're basically trying to specify what speed should the crosshead be running during my preload routine before the test starts, and then what force should it turn, should it uh, should be the threshold where it goes from the preload to the actual test. Um, so for both of those items, for test speed, um, I would never recommend, it's basically slower or equal to your actual, your initial testing speed. So if your crosshead is running at five millimeters, millimeters a minute when the test starts, then that should be the maximum speed during your preload. Possibly, I, I recommend to start slower. Um, and then the, the, the threshold for the force, the, the changeover point is um, kind of my rule of thumb is, is to never, to try to never go above 1% of the expected max load. So if you know your specimen breaks at 100 pounds, that your preload shouldn't be exceeding one pound um, because then you're working its way into that elastic region of the material where you might, where you might be missing data collection. Um, some more questions. Uh, do we have a, a test method for three point bend or yeah, does Instron have a test method for three point bend methods? So, uh, I guess a couple different ways of answering this, but, but yes, the, the, the flexure method type can be used to create both three point and four point, uh, flexure tests in blue hill elements. Um, Instron does offer one of the items on the list for Blue Hill Universal that you get, uh, which you do not get for Blue Hill Elements, is you get to choose a application module that includes a number of pre-configured method templates for various ASTM ISO uh, standards, including flex standards. So the, the ones I'm aware of, the most common in the world are uh, ISO 178, um, and then for ASDM, I think D, uh, ASDM D790 is, is the ASDM uh, flex standard. So those would be uh, included in, um, I believe the plastics app application suite. So you wouldn't even need to create those methods yourself. So they would be kind of pre-created pre with all the bells and whistles of all the different optimizations of, of Blue Hill software. Um, but again, this is only selectable for Blue Hill Universal. Um, so I guess the other thing I'll mention here is that it's worth noting that when uh, your system is being installed and Blue Hill Elements is, is opened up for the first time on site, that your field service engineer can create up to five methods. So if that is uh, one of the method types that you would like to have them create, then that, that they would do so. Um, uh, the last, so another, we're running low on time, but the, I'll try to answer this last one. Is there a way to have a validated grade list drop, list drop down for operator inputs? So a drop down list essentially for an, as an operator input, yes, uh, either specimen or sample choice inputs can be used and configured. Um, and they'll appear as a combo box for your operator to choose. So I think we're running low on time. Um, so thank you again. And I'm gonna hand things over back to, uh, to Nick. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I do see there's a, a few questions still lingering. I'm gonna get those over to Dan and Meredith afterwards and make sure that they can send you a response by email after this. And then just <clears throat> before I wrap things up, there's just two quick notes. Um, Actually, just one left. Uh, we will be emailing each of you a copy of today's recording along with the slide deck. So uh, you guys can rewatch part of this if, in case you missed part or just want to rewatch. And then, yeah, pretty much with that said, I just want to thank Dan, thank Dan and Meredith for presenting today. Great job. And thanks to all of you for attending. We really appreciate you joining us. Stay healthy, everyone. We hope to see you again next time.